Hi, my name's Sarah Fina and you're watching my channel, Fina Makes. In today's video, I wanna go through pattern cutting kit. So this is good for if you're a beginner and you wanna know the essentials when you're just starting out, right the way up to maybe there's something you have seen but you're not quite sure how to use it or whether or not it will be suitable for you. I'm gonna show you what's in my own personal toolkit and I'm gonna go through how to use all of those things as well. So first up, let's chat scissors. This is the area that you're arguably gonna spend either the most money or the most time trying to make a decision. There are so many different types of scissors out on the market, so many different brands, and the prices vary massively from like 10 pounds to over a hundred pounds. I'll be completely honest with you, I've used lots and lots of scissors over my pattern cutting career um, because I worked as a freelancer, so I have had access to different kit in different offices. I've worked as a teacher, so I've had access to different equipment in schools and colleges. Um, and I've actually settled on the humble Fiskars kitchen scissor. <laughs> like my mum had a pair of these for the kitchen, you know? Um, I've got a small pair for paper and I've got a big pair for fabric. I've also got a pair of these. These are amazing. These are like traditional tailor shears. These are by Mundial. Um, my beef with these scissors is there's nowhere to get them sharpened nowadays. I mean, I'm filming this during a pandemic, so nowhere's open anyway. But before that, um, you used to be able to take them to tailors or sometimes shoe repair shops to get them sharpened. I live in London. I don't know of anywhere that sharpens these scissors. Um, you have to send them away, I think, and it costs quite a lot of money. So sadly, I don't use these as much now because they need sharpening. The other thing that I've started to use for cutting out uh, fabric is a rotary cutter. So again, it comes in hideous orange. I'm not really sure why. Uh, if anybody has information, intel, to uh, particularly hot pink tools, that would be amazing. Put them in the comments below, please. Uh, because, you know, it's not very pretty. So yeah, I use a rotary cutter. This is really good if you have wrist issues. So I make a lot of corsets and sometimes I cut fabric out for costume and things that's quite thick. If you're doing stuff that's quite thick, sometimes it can be really heavy duty to use a pair of scissors like this. So you can invest in a cutting mat and a rotary cutter and that'll really save your wrists. It's also a lot quicker. So as an absolute basic essential kit, you want a pair of paper scissors and a pair of fabric scissors. If you have wrist issues or you're cutting out things that are particularly thick, or if a rotary cutter is what is gonna float your boat, then invest in a rotary cutter and you'll also need a cutting mat. Cutting mats are about 20 quid. I think this was also about 20 pounds. Next up is the humble and often overlooked pencil. I absolutely swear by mechanical pencils. So I don't really care about the brand, um, but I do care about the weight of the lead. I use a 0.7. So basically I'm quite heavy handed with my pencils. And if I've got a 0.5 lead, it snaps all the time. It's really, really annoying and actually quite wasteful because you're constantly snapping the lead and having to re-thread the pencil. So, um, I use a 0 0.7. 0 0.9, which is just under a millimetre, I find the lines too thick and not very precise. So my own personal favourite is a mechanical pencil with a 0 0.7 lead. This pencil is a Staedtler, and I think I've had it about 10 years, and it, it works. The benefits of using a mechanical pencil over a regular lead pencil are, um, you don't have to keep sharpening it every five seconds. Obviously, when you're drawing a lot of lines, if you're using a regular pencil, you keep having to stop and sharpen it. You lose the flow of what you're doing, but also it takes longer. This is literally just click it and the lead comes out and you've got pencil again. It's also much finer, much more precise and therefore much easier to draw accurate lines. Next up is tape measure. So my tape measure has inches on one side and centimetres on the other. I work both in centimetres and inches. It's quite possible to get by only using one of those units of measurement, but if you are dealing with a country like selling things to a country maybe that deal in the other type of measurement, you might wanna learn both. Also, uh, it's true in the UK, I'm not sure about the rest of the world, but in the UK, the fashion industry works in metrics, so they do centimetres, and the costume industry works in inches, um, and so does the tailoring industry. Um, I'm pretty sure that the States works in inches, uh, but Europe, for example, works in centimetres. And so, yeah, depending on what you're doing, it might be useful to learn both units of measurement. Next up, I want to talk about the Pattern Master. So I'm only briefly going to talk about this because I made a whole video dedicated to this little beauty and that's available on my channel. So go have a look at that if you want to see more in-depth information about the Pattern Master. 
This is basically a set square. So it's got curves and all kinds of things built into it. I can do um, right angled lines with it. I can do bias lines. I can do seam allowances, all that good stuff. Um, as I said, I've got a video dedicated to this. So if you want to learn how to use a pattern master, go check that out um, after you finish watching this one, obvs. If you don't have a pattern master, a set square does the trick, a set of French curves. You basically want a ruler that you can also use to draw right angles because things like drafting blocks um, require right angles and they should be as, like really accurate. And so you need something like an L, you know, like the L shaped long rulers or um, a plastic set square. You'll also need to draw curves. And so you can get things like um, flexi curve, which is basically a strip of lead covered in plastic and you can bend it into different shapes. I have to confess, I bought one and just never used it. But it is quite good for um, figuring out crotch curve on trousers because you can mould it around your body and then use that to draw your crotch curve. Little hack. Um, and a long ruler. So I've recently invested in a metre and a half um, clear plastic ruler. And yeah, it's really good for drawing long grain lines and cutting out strips of binding and things like that. But if you're just starting out and you want the absolute basic kit, you need something that's going to draw help you draw right angled lines. So either a pattern master or a French um, set of French curves and a set square. Next up, I want to talk tape, which may not seem like a very glamorous subject. I'm obsessed with magic tape. So magic tape is it's scotch tape, basically. The best brand I found is scotch. I have tried, it's not the cheapest. I've tried to find cheaper, um, more budget brands, but Generally, I found that the quality is not as good, so I always go back to scotch. The good thing about using magic tape over regular tape is you can draw on it. Um, it also peels off. So if you're trying to swing a dart, for example, and you're using the slash and spread method and you stick the dart down, but then later you decide you want to move it somewhere else, you can just peel the tape off. It doesn't rip the paper. You can also draw on it, which is super, super important. If you're using regular sellotape, you can only really draw on it with a biro. Obviously, that line's going to be permanent. If you're using magic tape, you can stick the tape on, draw on it with pencil, and then still rub it out. The other thing this is good for is when you're cutting out pieces. So when I'm cutting out um, corset pieces, for example, I'll stick a little bit of tape on the top corner and write the number of the piece so I know exactly where I am and my pieces don't get confused. And it peels off and doesn't leave a mark. Masking tape does leave a mark and it's a bit more sticky so it doesn't always peel off the paper either so i find magic tape isn't an, is an absolute lifesaver so on to some pattern specific equipment then first up we've got these little bad boys which are notches so the notches job i'll show you in a demo in a sec is to um nick a little bit of the paper out of the edge of the pattern so that you can match the pieces up mark the hip line all that kind of stuff it's for um any marks you need to make around the edge of the pattern piece. Some pattern cutters spend £100 on their notches. I find that a little bit excessive, but each to their own. Like, whatever floats your boat is all good. These, I think, were about £15, um, and I got them from a shop called Moreplan in London. These, again, um, like, like many things with pattern cutting, you can find these for five quid on online marketplace sites you get what you pay for if you get some that are five pounds they're going to break quite quickly and you'll have to buy them again never ever use them on fabric because it will blunt them they are only for paper so these are your notches i've had these for over 15 years probably 16 or 17 years and they're still absolutely fine and completely sharp next up we have got the pattern wheel so different pattern wheels do different things this is my favourite kind of pattern wheel. It's super lethal, really, really spiky. And if you accidentally grab it out of your pencil case by the head, it is going to hurt. I've injured myself many, many times, but I'm actually quite clumsy too, so that's fine. Um, you can always put like something over the top, like a bit of cloth or something, if you're as accident prone as I am. So the spikier ones are good for tracing through multiple layers, tracing through card, tracing through fabric. So if you want to copy a garment, um, I've got a video on here of how to copy a t-shirt. I use one of these because the other type of pattern wheel, they're quite blunt and all of these areas are filled in. So it's sort of like quite a 
it's quite a soft shape with quite blunt edges that's got its own uses um but my own personal favorite is the lethal one <laughs> so if you can invest in one of these guys next up we've got the drill hole aka the mushroom because it looks like a mushroom this guy's job is to make holes internally on the pan piece so where the notcher marks the edge of the pattern this marks anything inside the pattern so they're useful for things like buttonhole placements um, pocket placements um, the edge of darts like the apex of darts you would do a little drill hole just behind it uh, i'm going to show you how to use these in a sec you can actually get these as kits and they have different width attachments for the hole so you can choose the hole that you want you can also use these for making holes in belts and things like that um, but be aware that if you do that with your drill hole it's not going to be as sharp to then use on paper so i keep this this is dedicated to paper and i've got a separate punch for making holes for eyelets and things like that and the last thing that i'm going to show you is an awl so this awl is um an optional thing they're super useful for pivoting like when you're moving darts around and things like that um, but you can also use a pen or a pencil for that too so they are useful but they're not absolutely essential so if you don't have one it's not the end of the world they're mostly used for pinning something down so that you can then rotate it so for pattern adaptations for darts and things um, and also poking holes in things so when you've got a cardboard block and you want to mark the apex of your dart you'll just poke the all through the tip of the dart so that you can then mark it with a pen afterwards that's what they're used for mostly i mean they've got a few other uses as well so that's it for the chit chat section let's move on and i'll show you how to use some of the more complicated items that i've just talked about probably not going to show you how to use a pencil because i'm guessing that you already know how to do that i'm going to show you how to use four of the most complicated of the pattern making tools that we just went through so i'm going to show you the pattern wheel i'm going to show you the notcher i'm going to show you the drill hole and I'm going to show you the awl. So first up, the pattern wheel. For pattern cutting, I like to use this one. It's the super spiky one that I showed you just now. This will recreate any shape from a pattern to something underneath it. So if you want to copy a garment, I would always advise using this because it's these are long enough, the spikes, to go through layers of fabric. I also like to use it on paper because it makes definite holes. If you're going to do this, make sure that you protect the surface underneath with a cutting mat. I have done that without a cutting mat before and ruined many a table and had many a stern word because of it. So, pattern wheel. My only massive tip for this is when you're wheeling, cock it to one side. So you'll see the wheel is quite um, rickety, like you can hear it moving. It needs to be loose-ish so that it can spin if you tighten this up too much the wheel doesn't turn it doesn't do its job so it has to have a bit of give in it but this means that it also wobbles side to side so when you're using your pattern wheel instead of wheeling it straight like that just tip it to one side and that means it will push against this bracket bit here and it won't wiggle around so to tracing wheel you want to run the wheel along whatever area it is that you want to trace if you're not feeling super confident about your abilities of tracing in a straight line do the dash technique which i often often use i also do this for tracing so instead of doing one whole go do it in stages so one two three so i'll do it on this waist so you can see do a bit do a bit do a bit that also means that you can rectify what you're doing as you go. So if you come off a little bit, you can go back and go over it again. My only absolute do not do with this, it's not a pizza. You don't need to keep going backwards and forwards and actually you can rip and weaken your pattern. So once you've done one, do it like you mean it. Do like a nice short, sharp tracing. Do the next bit and so on. Next, I'm going to show you the drill hole, a.k.a. the mushroom. So I like using a drill with a narrower diameter. Um, I think this is about three millimetres. What these are for is to make internal markings on a pattern. So on this bodice, I need to mark my two darts. 
I'm going to go back from the apex here and I'm going to mark my drill hole 1.5 centimeters back. So back from the apex, 1.5. And this is a universal amount. The reason you don't drill right on the apex is because quite often when things are cut out, um, like in factories and mass produced and such, they use lasers and they actually create a hole. So if you've created a hole on the apex of your dart, you're going to have a hole in your garment. If you've created a hole a bit back from your apex, the hole's going to be hidden inside the dart. Pop your drill centrally over the hole. And then I'm only pushing a little bit, just twist side to side and it creates a hole. You don't want to push down too much. It should be minimal effort. Only use these on paper and it will stay sharp for the longest time. So the awl now, I mostly use these to either poke holes in things or to keep one bit still while I pivot it round, like to keep two things connected at a point. So for example, if I was doing a pivot for a dart, so if I'm tracing this off, but I wanna move the dart to a different location on the paper underneath, I hold these two together by using the point of the awl and then this top layer of paper is free to move around wherever it wants. And I'm holding them together at that particular point. So that's what your awl is for. Now for the notches, that's for marking any markings you need to do around the edge of your pattern pieces. Again, only use them on paper. So I'm going to cut this out and then show you how to use the notches. So here we go. We've got the notches. I want to mark my waist, my darts. Um, if I had a sleeve on here, I would mark the sleeve as well. And if this was longer, I'd mark like the hip or somewhere like that. Basically, notches are used to match two pieces together. So it's so that you know, like a jigsaw puzzle, which bit goes where. I want to extend my dart lines down to the edge. Because I don't want to guess where they are. And then you hold the notches up with the narrow bit to the top and the base plate underneath because then you can point your notcher over the line. And all you gotta do is push. If you only use these on paper, they'll stay sharp forever. If you start using them on fabric, it blunts them really quickly. So this is a front armhole, so I am just gonna mark one notch um, in the kind of lower third. And then I want one notch at my waist. That's how you use notches. So how is that? Hopefully I've taught you something new. If there's anything that I've missed that you would absolutely love to share with everyone else, then please put it in the comments below because this is as much about you guys sharing your knowledge as it is about me sharing mine with you. If you like this video, hit the like button. If you want to see more from me, then subscribe and you'll be notified every time I put a new video up. Thanks for watching. It's been great having you and see you next time.